in the morning it's a very very happy day very special day because liverpool has reached yet another cup final and uh, speaking of liverpool speaking of cup finals speaking of the league cup you're joined by mark seagraves mark of course has played for liverpool back in the day uh, so so privileged mark uh, to have you <laughs> on board once again how are you doing kaise ho aap mark that's not what you say to me off screen is it um, i'm okay <laughs> Okay, say ho. <laughs> I am I'm really good, Mark. Uh, yes, we are live, guys. People are asking, is this pre-recorded? Is this live? This is live. Uh, like I mentioned, Mark has played for England at the youth level. Mark has played for Liverpool, Man City, Norwich, Swindon. Uh, he's got more clubs than Bolton, uh, Bolton. Bol- Bolton, Norwich. Yeah. Uh, so it's it's a privilege to have Mark on board. Mark, thank you so much once again for doing this. Mark, how's mm-hmm. life in Goa? It's very very hot, man. As as is always the case, it's either hot or raining. Um, yeah, it's great. It's a, it's a, obviously a place that everybody wants to visit for one thing or another. Uh, <laughs> but to live here is okay. I I really love it here. By the way, you, uh, do you have your AC on, Mark? Like you you know you can <laughs> keep it on. You can. Yeah, I'm just saying, you know, I'm normally, like, normally <laughs> my face is, is red road, isn't it? <laughs> I will not be like, Mark, uh, what's that noise? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I won't say that, Mark. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, yes, guys, we are live. Uh, we are getting more people in. Dhire, dhire. And I just want to let everyone know, uh, this will be 95% in English. Because, of course, Mark uh is an honorary indian he has an aadhar card but his hindi is not up to the mark yet so uh, to give him respect and make sure that he understands everything this will be in english but thoda thoda hum hindi mein baat karenge taki aap bhi communicate kare maze kare ishan ke singh hi mark sid is saying hi manas and mark you give sir hi guys uh, danish is uh, hope you doing well mark Rishabh is saying hi, Mark. Hi, Manas. Yes. So let's get straight into it, Mark. Liverpool into the League Cup final. Another trip to Wembley. This is so yeah. exciting. I feel like a kid again whenever I hear the word Wembley, Mark. Are you Are you looking to be going to to, to the game? Are you? It's too. Uh, it's It's too expensive. Early. It's too short a notice, Mark. Like within a, literally, it's in a month's time. I can't. Yeah. It's yeah. too short a notice. But it's it's great it's great for Liverpool to have this as the starter for you know for the season if you like you know they they do it ever so well uh, they're managing without players as well um, they're bringing in younger players as we've seen um, so uh, everything's looking rosy for Liverpool and this is a good opportunity albeit against a, a Chelsea team that I, I think are coming into a bit of form and scoring goals as well so. Yeah, it'll be a, a great start to the 2023-24 uh, season for Liverpool. I, I always think it's kind of funny, Mark, because almost this time last year, I remember there was a picture where Klopp was apologising after the Brighton defeat here, if you remember. like mm. There were certain people, Mark, who wanted Klopp out as well. <laughs> and, and, and here we are. And can you imagine, here we are within a year's time and people are talking about a certain quadruple once again. Well, I, I, do you know with that? I think that's a lot to do with the social media as well. Uh, it's easy to to vent on on the social media, and they forget about you know Klopp is a human being at the end of the uh, at the end of the day. Although you wouldn't think so with what he's done to Liverpool, he's done brilliant. But you know, it's not an easy job being a manager. Um, obviously, they get paid well. They get that adulation. But, you know, if you look at what's happened at other clubs, managers have been sacked after 29 days in the job, you know, and obviously they're going to play Chelsea and Pochettino's been under pressure as well. We we talked about it on, on the kickoff show that, you know, is he the next one to go? Why, you know, you've got to give these, these managers time and you just have to look at Pochettino. No, he hasn't won anything in, in, in the big leagues. He's won in, in obviously Liga. But, you know, he's going to, 
he's going to win something sometime uh, because he's been in the Champions League final. He's been in other finals, and yeah, it's it, it's it's the it's the way of the world. You know, if Liverpool don't say for it, this is the weirdest thing about football for me is the expectation levels. So the Liverpool supporters now brilliant, happy. Now, if Liverpool finish third in the Premier League, get beat in the League Cup, not make it to the you know Europa League final, and not not get to the FA Cup final, people will be wanting Klopp's head again. Now you've gone to Wembley, you've had a great run in the Premier League, you know Europa League, and all of that. And this is the problem in, in football now. It's all a, a quick fix, you know. If it's not, it's. And it's like the Indian national team, Steve um, Stimak. He's getting real pressure now because of the way they played in the Asian Cup. I don't know what people want because, unfortunately, and we'll get the elephant out of the room, the team isn't good enough just now. So we need to remedy that and maybe implement some good, robust grassroots programmes and maybe develop these players to be better, to be able to play in them levels. But... Social media is an easy platform for people to vent, um, you know, and, and it's it's not nice at times. But, but Mark, we have to be honest, Poch is under pressure. I mean, this this topic started with Poch, like Liverpool playing uh, Chelsea in the final. Considering <clears throat> the amount of money that Chelsea has spent, I think that, unfortunately for him, is going to be... Yeah, but he didn't the spend all ticket. that money. He didn't spend I know, all that I know it's. I know it's not his problem. I know it's I know. Uh, the majority of the signings were made by the ownership or whatever. But, but the thing is, if he is not able to make it work, he will unfortunately be the one to get sacked. I, yeah. I understand that that's the issue there. But Mark, I think he should have done better with where, where they are right now. Of course, in, 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 the, in, the, in the, uh, the league, yeah. But if you look, I've got his, his stats here. In the last five games, they've only been beaten by Middlesbrough. 1-0, then they beat them 6-1. They scored 14 goals and only conceded four. So in the last five games, if you take that as being, you know, the, the, the graphic, if you like, he's done really, really well. Yes, the players, whether they perform for him is a different, different thing. But if you look at the games that they have played, you know, it was only the lack of finishing the goals that they would have got a lot more, um, a lot more points and a lot more wins. This season in the Premier League is done for them. I think the ninth or something like that. Uh, so they're done. You know, they, they man might manage to get into a Europa League place at some point. But um, I, I think he, he, you know, he's gone into a club that has had what two or three managers in the space of twelve months or eighteen months. So there's obviously something not right, and it's the players, isn't it? You know, um, but yeah, I think you'll see a lot of players going uh, from Chelsea, and um, a lot of um, well, obviously a lot of players coming in as well. But you know, they he's got to get, he's got to trim down the squad, he's got to utilize what he's got, at, and and I, I can see, I mean, he's got them to a cup final, you know, if nothing else. There's only which, there's which... only two, yeah, there's only two cup finals in England, and he's got them to one of them. You know what I mean? So. In that respect, yeah, I mean, I mean, if if he ends up winning a trophy, yeah. <laughs> I mean that that I mean it's it, it's a trophy at the end of the day, and he could. But that comparison, that because... but that comparison, I'm going to say is, if he wins the league cup and nothing else, and Klopp doesn't win anything, you know what I mean? Yeah, Who's under yeah. pressure? And this is the way football is. It's 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 a crazy game, you know. And if we've known one thing about football over the years. The ones that keep the managers, really, they're the ones that are more successful over a period. Like Alex Ferguson, you know, Klopp's been there a while now. The ones that have stayed and been there, then... Because what happens is, if you get rid of the manager, you also get rid of all the backroom staff and all of them players that they brought in. A new manager comes in with new ideas, them players don't fit that idea, and it's just a continual money pit. I mean, you look at Mourinho... Over a hundred million in payoffs, you know, in terms of getting sacked, he's earned a hundred million pounds in in just sackings alone. Mm. Football's crazy; it's really, really crazy. Certainly, and so uh, some wages. I mean, some signings that Chelsea have made are quite crazy when it comes to the money they've spent. Gaurav is saying, as a Chelsea fan, I'm not sure about Poch as winning manager. Gaurav, but you're just literally one game away. From winning a trophy, 
and uh, that mark mentioned a really great thing if if liverpool from here don't win anything and if chelsea win a trophy who has had a better season that's a comparison which last season people were making of arteta and ten hag because ten hag won the league cup arteta and arsenal were in the title race and <laughs> they faltered so on paper manchester united made it into the top 4 they won a trophy so they had a better season so mm-hmm. yeah it's all about winning at the end of the day uh But yeah, uh, Chelsea, Chel- Chelsea at the moment are hitting a bit of form, which is uh, little, little nervy for Liverpool <laughs> because because uh, we we are playing them very soon, and that is why Tejas has asked Mark, what are your thoughts about Liverpool's next two fixtures, Norwich and Chelsea? Norwich well, again. The- Yeah, I think historically Liverpool v Norwich, Liverpool have always held the upper hand, you know, whether they've been in the same division or not. Um, and I remember back in the day, you know, Liverpool would play when I was only a young kid. We'd listen to it on the radio. It'd be 5-0, 4-0, whatever, you know, against Norwich. Uh, and obviously they're in the Championship um, and we're flying. So I think that game uh, at the weekend is okay. But the big one's Chelsea because, as I say, Chelsea are really coming into a bit of form. The one thing about Chelsea that was missing was scoring goals and hitting the target. And if you look at the last two games or three games, I think it is no two. You know they they've scored six in in the Middlesbrough game and they scored fourteen goals in, over the course of the last five games. So it's 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 a worry, isn't it? You know because that's the one thing we've always said about Chelsea: great players, great squad. Why aren't they? T- you know why aren't they ticking? And now all of a sudden, he seems to. Do you think that's just well. nerves? Do you think that's just nerves, Mark? As Liverpool supporters, because let's be honest, <laughs> Liverpool right now are flying. Right, we're top of the table. We've beaten yeah. Arsenal away. Uh, the only one game we've lost in the league, we were down to nine men, and a clear goal was disallowed. So yeah. I think it's nerves. We are a much more settled team, Mark. It'll be. Do you know what it is, Malas? Right, <laughs> and I know exactly what it is. Get this out the way. Get this one out the way, and then <laughs> we'll, we'll be okay. You know, and you know, wouldn't it have been a great day for us if it had been Middlesbrough? You know, because that would have been a lot easier for us. But um... but then, but then I know, Mark, what the narrative would be like. Imagine if we lose to Middlesbrough in the <laughs> final. <laughs> Get clap out. <laughs> So at least yeah. the the stakes aren't as high with uh, Chelsea, so it won't be much of a um, a shake up if Chelsea do actually win the game. And so, but you know, if you look at they're both being done really well in um, in the league cups, haven't they? Over the years, I think Liverpool have got nine, and they've got Chelsea something like five or six. So um, Liverpool back in the nineties, I think they won four on the spin, Manas. You know, they were dominant. Wow. Uh, um, and obviously, I played in the the ninety five. Cup final when they beat us two uh, one for Bolton, uh, which was a a bitter pill with Mr. Matt Mallerman scoring two goals. Um, so yeah, since since them times, then it's been I think it's two or three they've won. But yeah, this is a great opportunity to to start not start the season, but this is the big one, isn't it, for the first cup of the season? And if you win it, that's it, mate. You're going back into you've only got three more to uh, to win then, haven't you? <laughs> the thing is, Mark. When I think about Jurgen Klopp at Liverpool, I mean, uh, this is, I'm so happy we we are doing this live right now because, uh, unfortunately, because of time constraints, we are not able to express the way we want to at times. I I I I see. In in my twenty odd years of supporting Liverpool, he is the best manager that we have had, and you have seen. Of course, you have worked with Kenny Dalglish. You've played with King Kenny. Of course, you've. Seen Bob Paisley and Bill Shankly, but uh, Joe Fagan. But Mark, yeah, the, the, he was the, the one. Thing. Joe Fagan and Bob Paisley—they're the ones that won more trophies than any of them. You know. Yeah, I um, mean, Bob Paisley won three Champions League titles mm-hmm. for Liverpool. Uh, like Euro- was, Europe, European Cup, it was balanced. Come on. <laughs> yeah, European Cup. Sorry. European yeah. Cup, not Champions League right now. I'm sure it sounds weird, right? Can you imagine Bob Paisley saying, "Oh, we won three Champions Leagues"? <laughs> uh, you never know; it might be the Super League next up ten oh, years from dear. now, Mark. God uh, forbid. But, yeah, <laughs> we'll get to that. We'll get to that, uh, guys. Uh, if you have any questions for Mark, uh, you can please go for it. Uh, Mark is here with us for a few more minutes, at least. 
for the next 40 odd minutes if if he has the time uh, he will answer some of your questions and he will file his invoice to me i know that <laughs> but <laughs> but mark the, the one thing about uh, klopp i was talking about that we've won everything but we've not won it multiple times okay we won the league once the champions league the fa cup the league cup the super cup the club world cup the community shield i know i'm being uh, greedy greedy, <laughs> greedy but the thing is now he's into his 7th or 8th year and if you want to be, you know, like if you want to put him in the conversation as Premier League great managers, you know, like Liverpool, screw Premier League managers, Liverpool great managers. They have won it multiple times, you know. So well, I, he's, I up, want... he's up there, man, I with them. Of he's he absolutely is. up there. You know, you, you talk about Liverpool managers and there's been some bad ones as well, by the way. But he is, he is, he is as near to your Shankly to your Paisley, to your Fagan, to your Doug Leishes, as anyone's ever been. You know, he's got this rapport with the with this with the city, with the supporters, you know, uh, he understands the club, he understands the community that he's representing. You know that from how it is in Liverpool. Um, and he's he's got all he's ticked all them boxes and he's brought success to the football club. What you've got to remember as well, Manas, is you know, he's had one one team that done really well, and he's had to, you know, through age and whatnot, the whole midfield has had to be regenerated and and players coming, and I think he's done that really really well without having a a season. Maybe I think last year when they in, in the Europa League places, but other than that, that was the only year that they haven't been in it to win it, if you like. You know what I mean? And now all of a sudden, he's brought in. Players that I didn't think uh, would be up to the standard. You like to see your Curtis Joneses and, and your Harvey Elliotts and, and, and players like that. But they have seem to have really bedded in. Uh, and they're keeping out some big names, aren't they? You know, and he's, he's acquired young young players, the likes of Gakpo and, and players like that who are learning Diaz. They'll, they'll get... Nunes is a, is a prime example. He's rough, he's raw, he's... You know, we're going to see the best, the best of him over the course of the next two or three years. We're seeing it now. He's now converting the chances, albeit, you know, he should score five a game, shouldn't he? You know what I mean? But he's now getting one or two here and there. And I, I just think, don't underestimate what he's done to Liverpool Football Club. Because well, never. he's never. come in and it's been a shambles, you know. And, 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 I, and I love Graeme Souness. I do. I think he's brilliant. He was a brilliant footballer. He's been a brilliant manager. But what he did at Liverpool, it's taken so many years to put right. And unfortunately, Brendan Rodgers and, and, and people like that after that were, you know, they were up against it. Now he's come in and he's done exactly what they've wanted to win the, the Premier League. He's done that. That's the biggest achievement. Forget the Champions Leagues. That's the biggest achievement that he's done for Liverpool. And let's not get ahead of ourselves and say he's got to win multiple. He hasn't got to win. If, if, he, if he'd stayed at Liverpool for the next seven years and, and won a Champions League here, a Premier League there, that's OK. He's, he's done well. But we, we're, we're loading all of these pressure on him, aren't we? Because he's not multiple winning. You know, I, he, I think when I look back at Shankly, well, not so much Shankly, but Paisley and um, Fagan, that squad, that team was together for a long period of time. I think they won the European Cup twice on, on the spin, didn't they? they? They won it in 77 or 78 uh, and 79 or 80. 70. Yeah, so they had that squad. I'm looking at, at my stats always, you know what I mean? And <laughs> they won 1981, 82, 83, 84 in the League Cup. So they had the nucleus of that squad that never changed. He's had that and then he's had to dismantle a team and bring them back together. And he's done brilliant. I think he's done absolutely wonderful. Uh, there is, there is, I mean, I mean, Jurgen Klopp for me is, is God sent. I mean, what he has done for the club as, as a supporter, I've never seen better days. I'm, I'm sure you being a scouser, you've seen way better days, but this, this is the best time. To be alive as a Liverpool supporter. But what I was trying to say, Mark, is that, you know, the fact that we reached three Champions League finals and won just one. We we finished behind City by one point twice. You know, you just can't help but feel as a Liverpool supporter, we could have won more. You know, so just, just as a fan and mm -hmm. as an admirer and... <coughs> 
lover of Jurgen Klopp, I want us to win a few things a few more times so that we look back at it and we're like, wow, what a man. You know, like, mm. you remember we won the league twice and then on the last day we faltered. You know, you have a mix of the great times and the good times. I'm not even going to say bad times because even when we went till the last day, let's be honest, what, what great seasons we had, Mark. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, I mean, that gets... That gets put into no one ever knows who comes second in the hundred meters, do they? They know who comes first. And the same with every bit of sport, you know, and you've got to realise the the squads and different things and the money that's getting spent. I mean, maybe what's gonna happen with Man City if if they'll get rescinded, magnate some of the uh <laughs> some of them leagues and, and, and Liverpool might get one if you like. I don't know, but um I, I just think of course, he wants to win everything. All the players want to win everything, every game they go out there. And I think if you look and you're really honest, Manchester City have been the best team for the last five five years at least. Yeah. yeah. Liverpool have done brilliant to, A, breach that once at least, you know, and then obviously the Champions Leagues. And, I mean, it becomes a bit of a lottery, doesn't it? I mean... You look at the, the poor carriers, you know what I mean, and and games like that. So that can't, he can't do anything about that, you know. And this is the thing about when you when you're a player, you don't think of anything other than, oh, it's the cup final today. I just want to play well and, and I want us to win. But the managers, he can't do anything once he's spoken to you before the game and done all the training in the week. He's he can't. He's like. And I've only realised that when I went into coaching also, standing on the side is a hundred times worse than being on, on the pitch because you can't do anything. Being helpless. You're helpless, yeah. The only thing yeah. you can affect is either bringing players on and taking players off or changing it tactically at half time. So, you know, a lot a lot of it is, is about the players as well. And we've been fortunate to have really, really top players play for Liverpool as well, even in the bad times, you know what I mean? Obviously, Steven yeah. Gerrard is, is is one of them. Uh, but can you imagine him in this team right now? Can you imagine Luis Suarez, Gerrard, Alonso, these guys? I mean, it's ridiculous. But you're so true, even during times where we were not... Uh, Relevant when it comes to winning trophies, we had some great manage, uh, yeah. great players. Absolutely, Torres, absolutely. Torres, 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 my goodness, oh. yeah, yeah, Master just, Even one of them, if even one of them in our team now, they would yeah. all get in, they would all get in the team now, yeah. wouldn't they? Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. So, we've had some really good players, but not all at the same time. And Liverpool yeah. have had that back in the day, you know what I mean, with um. What's this, Mark? Would you take I mean, Yamal as an early Salah replacement? Uh, if this is I don't, just a, Mark, I don't think Barca will sell him in the first place. He is theirs. Let's be honest. He's still very, very young as well. We've seen what, what yeah. players, you know, um, it's not an easy thing to to go from. The only one who's done it, and I, and I think he's done it seamlessly, has been Jude Bellingham going from Dortmund to the yeah. biggest club in one of the biggest clubs in the world and he's taking it by storm i mean if he yeah. was at liverpool then liverpool would be 10 points clear uh easy now but yeah i mean liverpool have to they have to be in the mix every year to get the top players you know i mean we, we should be in for the likes of mbappe but he's not going to come he'll go to obviously real madrid or barcelona before that or whatever before that you know and and I just want to touch on things as a player. And you probably, I don't know whether I've spoken to you about this, but do you know what the big thing is for players when they're going to clubs? So say, for instance, Manchester United were in for you, Chelsea were in for you, um, Real Madrid were in for you, or whatever, right? Do you know who has the biggest influence on that move? Who has the biggest influence on that move? Yeah, is it the player, the agent, the club? Who is it? It's it the wife. The it could be the it's, family. I was going to say the family. <laughs> it's it's absolutely the wife. So sometimes, because the amount of money, I mean, I would always go for footballing reasons. So if if Liverpool would have an opportunity to be in the Champions League every year, I'd take a twenty grand a week hit to do that. But players and are all different, and 
it's where the, the the kids can go to a good school, where the wife can go shopping. On uh, so London's a big a big um, a big attraction because they have all of the you know the big shops and it's you know it, so all of these things come into play. It's not necessarily always a um, footballing, a footballing decision. Yeah, I, who was the remember the Australian boy? who went to West Ham instead of coming to Liverpool. Lucas Neal. Lucas Neal. Lucas Neal, right? Now, yeah. if you asked him now, he would tell you, hand on heart, the worst decision he ever did was yeah. going to West Ham and not coming to Liverpool. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, yeah, football's a strange business. For, and you, you're a supporter, so you only see a side of it. But... When you're actually in it, in the bowels of it, like I used to be at Blackpool as an assistant manager, you yeah. know, trying to get a player in to, to the club, yeah. it would be crazy. I'd, I'd, I'd be getting them after going into the man and everything else. So yeah, it's 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 a it's a different world. Yeah, but the entire package is is so different now because, like you say, you know, like now so much money is involved. You you can be playing for I'm assuming Mark, you could be playing for a Palace and Luton. On the outskirts, probably of England, not not like Palace's outskirts, but like Luton is on the outskirts and still be relevant and thriving and have a really good life as well. Yeah, so I get I what mean, you think financially, yeah. And so I I would always go for footballing reasons, but a lot of the decisions are made, as you said, by family, you know. And yeah. where's the best place to shop? Where've got the best schools, you know? So yeah, it's a, it's a lot like that and. So I thought, what Mark? Who do you think will win the Premier League? Oh, I so want Liverpool to do it. I really do, and they're in such a good position. But you know who's coming up behind us, don't you? And uh, Aston <laughs> Villa, right? <laughs> <laughs> they they um, you know what they're like second second half of the season as well, Man City. Yeah. You, you can just Liverpool have to not get beat, and if they don't get beat. Then they win the Premier League. Simple. They've got four points clear. Is it four points clear or three? We are uh, the same number of games, two points clear of City. Oh, three points clear. Okay. So that's yeah. just one game. So, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, I, I just, each game, it's like, uh, it's must like, win. It's yeah, must uh, win. Abso yeah, absolutely. And, you know, with the likes of Salah being injured and whatnot. Um, but having said all of that, if you look at the top end of Liverpool's team, no matter who's playing, you know, they didn't play Jota, who'd scored two goals in the game before. So they've got the players there up front. My only worry would would have been, but they look a lot better defensively now. And I'm, I'm not going to mention our mates, but the young boy who's gone in at right back, he makes it look a lot more solid, you know. Connor like Bradley. Connor, you like Connor yeah. Bradley? He needs to he needs to work on his on his defending. Going forward, he's 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 not he's nowhere near as good as Trent Arnold going forward, right? But he's better defensively. And as a right sided centre half, he's always within my my reach rather than it, you know, you've seen Trent Arnold up left left wing, haven't you? And you're thinking, where the hell am I have I got to go? So you know, they look a lot more solid. It's never been an issue scoring goals for Liverpool. Never been an issue. The issue has always been defensively, uh, and I think even even um, Joe Gomez playing left back, you know, he's been I a revelation. He's been a revelation. I call him, Mar I call him Marcelo now. His name yeah. his name is Marcelo now. Marcelo. So don't, yeah. don't disrespect him by calling him Joe Gomez. <laughs> Joe Gomez. Mar <laughs> Joe Marcelo. <laughs> That Joe Gomez is not a very good sport. Joe Marcelo is all right. Yeah. <laughs> He's like a new signing, isn't he? <laughs> yeah. And, you know, and you, and you can see that. You can see him growing. As I say, footballers are human beings as well. And what and they read what goes on on social media. And then if someone kept on having a go at, at you, Manas, for this, that and the other, eventually you'd think, oh, they must be right. But... If people start saying, I'm not having a go at you, but, you know, encourage it. You can see the, the, the confidence in Gomez right now, can't you? You know what I mean? He, he's like, he's getting plaudits as well from people like yourself and other people I've, I've seen online and, and on the television. Um, and long may that continue. Robertson's back in. I'd always have Robertson in before him, of course. But, 
you know, he's he's been a really good acquisition on that left hand side. I never thought I would say that anyway, but Mark, I, he think, has. I think one thing, Mark, this season has has been so pleasing. Matic got the ACL, unfortunately. Suddenly, our youth academy produces Kwanzaa, and he looks like a mini Van Dyke. Now, he's a when big, we look he's at a big him, lad. yeah, yeah, and and then suddenly, Connor Bradley from our academy as well uh, is is coming uh, into his own at right back. We see we saw Bobby Clark yesterday when Harvey Elliott was taken off. He looked so composed. Mm-hmm. We are seeing Curtis Jones from the academy. Sure, Harvey Elliott was 15 when we signed him, but. Harvey Elliott suddenly has become a, a regular in our team. Mm. It's and, and when you're competing with someone like a Man City and Man United and even Arsenal lately spending money and then Newcastle might, you need this avenue to mm. produce these players. And 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 I'm and I'm so glad we are doing this. And uh, long may it continue. I'm ve- it's 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 very pleasing. You know, you know, when you watch your team play, of course, winning is important, Mark, but you just feel so proud. Yeah. You, you just feel, oh wow. You know, even though I'm not scouse, when I see someone like uh, Connor Bradley do well, I feel, oh, he's one of us. As weird as it may sound to you, but it it just feels, oh wow, he's one of us. Look at him, man. But I, I wasn't a great lover of the academy system because I, I I thought it was making players soft. You know, it was too easy, too nice to pitches having their own physios and the, the kids not even having to clean their own boots or whatever. But if you look across the board now at players that are coming through, Phil Foden, Palmer at Man City, to the, to name just two. And you look at Chelsea, they've got a lot of players that are coming through as well. Liverpool. So it's actually working. Them academies have been going for what? 25, 30 years now. So we're seeing the benefit of them academy systems right now with, with players. Yeah. Trent Arnold's another one who's come yeah. through the, the academy, you know? So it's it's working and it's not just Liverpool that are doing it. Loads of clubs are, are, are having to do it. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> I hope Mark so. is the Harry Kane. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, it's rather funny, right, Mark, what's happening because you got to feel for the guy. It's it's not even like he's playing bad, right? He is the... <laughs> well, he has, he has the he has done in the last two games. He's been anonymous no, 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 in the two this, games. This season, he's done all right. I listen. I know, great. I, I know. I know. I'm not. I'm not getting into the. <laughs> <whole class. laughs> I'm not getting into that, Mark. But let's be honest. For so buying this season, he's been really good. He's been scoring the goals. Yeah. But mm-hmm. what? What I before you answer this, I people are talking about the Harry Kane curse and blah blah. Last season, Bayern got away with it. Uh, Dortmund bottled it on the last day. So, it, it wasn't like last season they were great. I think they are just continuing what they were last season. And well, me and me and you had this discussion at the start of the season about yeah. the Bundesliga. And I fancied Leverkusen. And because Bayern Munich squad is so, is so weak in terms of depth, they only have a, a squad of 24, 25 players. Now, when you look and you go through the first 11 is fantastic. Then the likes of your oh, cheaper moting is if he's going to play, Nabry's going to play, all all good. But then if you look in, there's been so many times this season, Manners, where they've only had four substitutes and five substitutes on the bench. That worries me. And as as the and last year it worried me to the extent where I I said to you, I think Leverkusen are, are going to win the league and. To be fair, they've done brilliantly up to up to now, haven't they? You know, so um, yeah, I, I don't know whether it's because of of Harry Kane, but I think it's because the team isn't isn't as as good as it has been over the years. And unfortunately for him, <laughs> if they don't win it this year, then he's going to be blamed, isn't he? You know, so yeah, social media will be at him for sure if 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 that happens. Uh, and and I also think one more reason, Mark, I I just feel Thomas Tuchel has not settled in yet it feels like it from the outside point of view you get the feeling that Tuchel is always edgy he's not quite you know you know like when you look at Hansi Flick he was absolutely loved and adored uh, even though he was for a very less time and he won everything Pep he had the faith of everyone Nagelsmann never had that you just always get the feeling that Tuchel is a few bad results away from people questioning him again his position 
Well, and, and uh, that's yeah. and that's not that's not a healthy environment for any team to succeed. When you look at Javi Alonso and Leverkusen, no one is questioning anything. Everyone is on board, right? The, to, to well, I'll, I'll, tell, I'll tell you something about again about football. If you're winning games, you can paper over all the cracks that's happening around you, right? And everyone just, oh yeah, we'll win and we'll win it. As soon as you lose a game, you see it with Arsenal. People are now questioning Arteta, you know, because they were top of the league. And the same thing will happen with Liverpool. If Liverpool end up being second or third in the league, then people will be asking questions about Klopp. Why? Why couldn't we get over the line? What is it? Is it his management or is it the players or, or whatever? Um, and, and I think with Tuchel, I mean, you, you've got a Nagelsmann must be the unluckiest man in the world. He got sacked when they were top of the league. Hmm. Do you know that they, they were doing brilliantly? Six, six and six in, in the Champions League as well. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, to bring in Tuchel, who, as you say, I mean, he, he always looks like he's 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 like a school teacher to me, you know. And and I know from what I've heard of people, he's he's a, he's a very good manager. And he's a very good man manager as well. It doesn't look like that, but he does back his players. Um, but he's at a stage now in his life where he's had the big move, Chelsea, yeah. and then obviously Bayern Munich now. He's obviously not worried about financial um, worries. So he's not going to take any nonsense from anybody upstairs, if you like. You know, so he's it's a bit like Mourinho. That's why he gets sacked all the time, because he... He probably pushes too many buttons. You know, I want this player, I want that player, and they'll say no and he'll cause trouble or whatever. You know, a good manager like that, he's been sacked so many times for being a really good manager, hasn't he? You know, normally managers, like like we've talked about Alex Ferguson, Jurgen Klopp, who stayed at a club for a while. Marino never stays for more than two or three years, does he? And then he gets he gets bulleted. Um, so, yeah, it's... Um, with with with, and again, this will be a bad season for for Bayern Munich if they don't win the the Bundesliga. You know they scraped over the line last year. If if they don't win the Bundesliga, it's it's uh, a disaster. It's not even a bad season; it's a disaster for them. And they're out of the uh, cup as well, the the Pokal, the cup. So yeah, um, yeah. they've really and, only got the Champions League and and the Bundesliga. You know, so and and with the high line that they play i think there are certain teams called manchester city real madrid who can certainly take advantage of that oh, yeah. uh, I, mean, I mean on the, on their day maybe certain other teams as well but uh, football bloody hell uh, annie sunil bhai whoever it is thank you so much for joining in the chat results talk in the end if leverkusen drop hard drop of hard from here questions will creep in there too social media age criticism spares no one that's true Absolutely yeah. true. Uh, since we are on social media, guys, almost 250 people are watching. Please like the stream. If you haven't liked the stream, subscribe to Menace in the Monk. We really, really appreciate it. And Mark has been so kind uh, to stay with us. Uh, Mark, there is a, a question for you okay. uh, from your playing career. Wow. When... This is a, a thing that's close to my heart. I, I only ever played for Liverpool twice. And that's the biggest achievement I've ever done in my life in football, is to get into a team. They were the best team in the world. Forget about England, forget about Europe. They were the best team in the world and they had the best players. And they were the big dogs, you know. They were winning everything. Um, so Man United will always be a big club. Um, it's probably the one of the biggest clubs in the world, if not the biggest club. But it's going through its 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 problems right now, as Liverpool did. You know, it hasn't been hunky dory for us either. Um, and you'll see this across the board with lots of clubs. Man City will have it. You know, it's you've seen now with the guy who's left, the CEO or the CFO was left to go to Man United. Something brewing there as well. So from having all of that trophies, Pep will go, the players will go. And then all of a sudden, Manchester City will be uh, and also run again. So um, when I was at Liverpool, they were absolutely fantastic. You know, the Ian Rush, and no one ever mentions Ian Rush in terms of being good strike. If Ian Rush was a striker today, he'd be worth 250 million. Easy. And people what? would... He'd be worth... Easy. He was, he was the forerunner of this gagging pressing now because I remember playing, I was at Man City, I'd left Liverpool. 
I went to play for Man City and we were at Main Road and I played right back. And when I say about Rushy, he used to run at defenders and then get across the other park and or the other side of the pitch and run at the left back. He'd do it all, right? And he'd start off the pressing from Liverpool. Uh, and this particular day, Eric Nixon, our goalkeeper, had the ball and he rolled it out to me and Rushy must have been 30 yards away. And I just thought, oh, I can control it and look up and have a look. Before I'd controlled it and looked up, he was there. And I went, wow, I need to, I need to really need to, you know, to understand what this is all about. Because as I said, I'd only played twice in the best team in the world. So it was easy. Alan Hansen, Mark Lawrenson, you know, uh, Jan Mulby sweeping. My goodness, you know, can you imagine? Bruce Grobler in goal, Kenny Daglish, Ian Rush. It's it, it was just it was the Stevie best Nichol. team. Stevie, Stevie Nichol. Nichol was there, yeah. Stevie Nichol was there. Uh, Craig Johnston, the guy who yeah. did the Predator boots. Very very. Ronnie Whelan, Steve McMahon, all of these players, all internationals, all proper proper players. You know who they like to drink, they like the social side of, of life, but. <laughs> But let me tell you at what. Least, at least you got. At least you got that out of them, Mark. You like to drink. <laughs> well, I'll tell you the story about uh, we played Norwich away. Funny enough, and I was always in the squad around 17, 18 years of age, but never ever close to playing. But mainly to put pack the boots and do all that with the kit man and stuff like that. Anyway, we got to Norwich and it got called off because of snow or something or else, and we couldn't leave to come home until the next day. And I was a kid, I was like an apprentice sort of thing, an early pro. I was on, I didn't earn any money then. I think it was £80 a week I was on then. And um, I had to give out more for that to my mother, you know, for my lodgings and stuff. So anyway, we get there and I didn't have any money because I didn't think he needed it. We'd get to the hotel and so they were all going out on a, on a night out. And these are the big names, Ian Rush and, and Ronnie Whelans and stuff. And they said, come on, Siggy, you coming? I went, no. I said, no. I'm all... And the only reason I wasn't going to go, because I didn't have the money. And I said, no, no, no. They said, what's the problem? I said, I don't have any money. And they all put a fiver in each and gave me the money. I went out with them to have, have this drink. And I just thought, wow. I used to I told my dad about it. You know, it was like I was part of that group. Even though I was still a kid, they they brought me in, they looked after me, um, and it was like a real family. You know, I know it's a different world now in terms of of all of. But my point again was, they liked to the drink and they did all of that stuff. But if they were playing now, they would have all adhered to the rules in terms of having good diets. You know, and their quality and technique would would have been. I mean, Ronnie Whelan was 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 probably for me one of the best midfielders to ever play for Liverpool, and that's a big shout when you look at the likes of Sunes and all of them guys. Yeah. I seen your one with Terry McDermott there. What another player he was at the start yeah. of the show. Yeah. yeah, what a player, you know. Um, so yeah, that was just a little snippet of me with Liverpool. Yeah, they were the big <laughs> dogs. Absolutely, they were the not the big dogs, the dogs bollocks as well. They were absolutely <laughs> <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> they were they were the hyenas. <laughs> oh yeah, and but uh, Joshua is asked, us, yeah. yeah, yeah, and 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 I mean, whatever little uh, I have interacted with all footballers, this is just not to do with Mark and Terry and Ash. Whatever little David, such great, genuine, honest people. A lot of personality, a lot of pizzazz for sure, <laughs> but uh, really great human beings. Joshua is asking, what was Mark's favorite away trip as a player? Was it St. James Park? Was Joshua supports Newcastle. That's why he put was it St. James Park. But Mark, you can be honest. Which was your favorite away trip as a player? It was Old Trafford. Okay. Uh, and another one, I used to love playing at Goodison. Um, played at, um, obviously, St. James's Park a lot. And the atmosphere, I mean, probably if you looked at if you look across the board at the most fanatical supporters, they've got to be in the top one or two, you know. Um, it's it's in a place where it's so out the way for players to want to go to. Now it's different, you know. It, it's it's right up in the north and it's cold. and it's But when you go there and you have 
a full a full stadium. Um, there, I love the Geordies. The Geordies are very close to the Scousers, aren't they? In terms of the way they why are, I? You know, why I? Uh, and they look after themselves and they look after each other. Um, but yeah, atmosphere there is second to none. Uh, but for me, I Old Trafford only because it was the biggest ground as well at the time. I mean, a lot of stadiums now have been increased with the capacity. But they they were always 65, 72,000. And it was when you go out on the football pitch and you're looking, it's like geez, it's like playing at Wembley. You know, you go to Wembley and you look and you think, Jesus Christ, you know. And then Old Trafford. Um, and, and, and again, it was always... Because if I played for Bolton against Manchester United in the Cup, we, we played them a couple of times. It's a derby game because Bolton's in the in a Manchester area, so they had that added. It's called Lancashire. It's called Lancashire, right? Lancashire, yeah. Um, but the certain Berry is is in Manchester. Wigan's in Manchester, so Wigan Man United is a derby as well, you know, okay. and Man City. But um, it's in the city of Manchester. That's it. But yeah, and and, and Goodison. As much as uh, I don't like Everton, uh, Goodison Stadium was was beautiful. It was really compact. Um, the, 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 the supporters were close to the pitch and the atmosphere and the football and the surface was brilliant as well. Got to remember, if you look back, Manus, and you look at some of the pitches that even before before our time, especially, it's like playing in, on a paddy field, you know, with um, mud on and, and just, it's only now, I mean, you would never, you can't see anything wrong with any of the pitches now, can you? In the, in the Premier League or anything else. But, um, yeah, that was it. Old Trafford, probably, but uh, Goodison is a, a, a close second to that. Um, yeah, and also, we I was always fairly successful at Goodison, so that that's even better. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that that uh, tasted sweet when you won at Goodison. Uh, Nish is saying the names Mark is mentioning, legends of our games, not only Liverpool. Thanks for providing insights of Rush on how good of a player he was. Some of us have only seen highlights, never seen gameplay, says Nish. Nish is one of our regulars. Uh, Gaurav has asked a question. Toughest match of your career, Ma? Would have been against Manchester United. We played them in the FA Cup and they had a player called Mark Hughes. Who of was big, strong, robust. He used to, as soon as he got hold of you, he, he, you couldn't move. And this particular day, I played really, really well against him. It was nil-nil. And if you if you if you see a footage of Mark Hughes, it's always get it into the controls, into him. He kick it up off his foot onto his knee, turn, and he's always used to score goals by volleys, you know. And this particular day, 89 minutes, I've shut him out, you know. And then this happened. And the pitch was bobbly as well, and it bobbled up. He turned me and volleyed it into the into the top corner. But a little thing about that, he someone told me I don't know that it was true, but he'd said or someone asked him who's the toughest opponent you've you've played against this season. And bear in mind we weren't in the Premier League; we were in the the Championship, I think, at the time. And he said me for that for that season because of that game, I really played well against them. But when you're at that level, that little bit of quality, that's all it takes is, is one second, one minute of, of I don't know, of not concentrating or whatever it was. He turned me and volleyed it in and they went on. They went on to win the FA Cup that year as well. So, um, yeah, he was, that, that was the toughest against him. Get him off, Get him off, he's shy. He's only played for Bayern Munich, Barcelona, Chelsea, Man United. <laughs> <laughs> you know I mean? And then he's playing against Bolton in the FA Cup. But another Mark, one, I'm know? sorry. Can I just mention yeah, please, another one, please. a quick one? Yeah. Um, I'm just trying to think of the guy's name. Anyway, he was a, he's, he was an ex-Hull City, uh, ex-Newcastle. Uh, Billy, Billy, I can't remember, but he, he was a big, big lad, and he was a he was a money lender back in his in the city. So he'd lend money out, and then if the people didn't give him it back, he'd go back in and he'd go crack them and get whatever. So he was a big robot. Billy Whitehurst, that was it. 
And I made my debut for, for Norwich. I was, what, 18, 17, 18 at the time. And he was, he's been renowned for, for like smacking into people and elbow. And, and I got him sent off. He didn't elbow me, but I went down and got him sent <laughs> off, right? I was a 17 year old, 18 year old kid here, right? From Liverpool, you know, so the expectations of this player. For, so, honest to God, mate. After the game, my dad was there and we went into the bar and he wanted to knock me out in the bar, this Billy Whitehurst, right? I left and then and then the next year I was played against Hull. And he was playing for Hull, Billy Whitehurst. So I've, <laughs> I've had him want to knock me out in, in one bar and he's bought me a drink actually after the game against Hull. So this big, oh, can you imagine back in the day when um, you used to go into the, the lounge after where the supporters yeah. were and have a drink and everything else? And yeah, so I can say he wanted to knock me out and then he bought me a drink the next one. So yeah. Can you imagine that happening now? Uh, players going into a bar and having a drink with the supporters? I don't know how I don't know how it works. I mean, I was at Derby what 13, 14 years ago, and the players had their own players' lounge, which was purely for the families and then and no alcohol whatsoever was served in in the lounge so i can imagine it's very much all the lounge when there's no alcohol <laughs> well it's it's where they but they wouldn't they wouldn't have alcohol in it listen i i don't think for one minute that all the players don't drink of course they've got to have something to relax so they might have a glass of wine when they go home or go to a nice wine bar but the days of Cavorton, like we used to do on block in a nightclub in your own city, uh, they're, they're completely gone. You know what I mean? But yeah, if, if you if you could have had Manas or if I could have had a phone back in the day and just videoed night out, I would be a multi, multi-millionaire, honestly, God. <laughs> but uh, hand on heart, you, you can be honest, I'm not going to ask you where and when now. Have you ever played a game hungover? No, never. And I, and I can go hand on heart. I was, and very much am still today, a real professional in terms of, you know what I do in terms of just even doing the TV work and stuff like that. I've never, never done that ever in my life. And that's one thing that I can actually say, you know, players are players. The likes of Rooney. You know, how the hell can Rooney say to his players, don't go out and don't do this and don't do that, when he's done all of that? I never did. I Don't get me wrong. I did it at the right times. So I was equally as bad as all of them at the right times. But I would never go out on a Thursday, uh, Friday, or a Sunday, Monday, if we had the game Tuesday or Wednesday. Do you know why I wasn't good enough to not do it the way I did it? I had to be on... 100% just to be okay. Whereas a lot, some players have gifted and they can do that and maybe, but eventually it catches up with you. But no, absolutely not. And when I went into coaching, I would sign players that, or we would sign players, especially at Blackpool, that I played with. They were my friends, like Mike Newell and um, Simon Grayson, who's out here now and, and stuff like that. And the one thing in football is, I, if I said to them, right, lads, after the game, everybody, just get yourselves home. No one out tonight. We, we're going to be, you know, we've got a good big game Tuesday. None of them could look at me and say, what are you on about? You know, you used to do that. So in that respect, uh, no, I've never done it, mate. I, I've made up for it now when, um, you know, I never used to drink that much ever um, in terms of, I couldn't, I wasn't good enough to, 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 to not give it a hundred percent, if that makes sense, you know, I had yeah. to be a full tilt every day. And I train. If someone said to me, "Do ten burpees," I'd do twenty. You know, um, not because to show off, just because that's the way I am. I went for a walk yesterday, right <laughs> in the heat around where I live, and I seen this guy who was must have been two hundred and fifty yards ahead of me. So again, that instinct kicks in. I've got to beat him to where he's going. And I'm walking. <laughs> I took three minutes of me you dying. Don't even, you don't even know where he's going. 
but I had to beat him. I had to get there, and I and, 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 and I knocked three minutes off me time and came home. And I thought I'd had a stroke because I felt so ill, no the heat and everything else. I'm stupid like that. But um, yeah, I, I wish I could have my career again at the start and really, really take it to another level on that side. It's not like the weights like you're doing and all the rest of it. We weren't encouraged to do that at Liverpool. The gymnasium, if you were found in the gymnasium, you got a right rollicking off the off Ronnie Moran, Roy Evans, Kenny. That you know what the, what the gymnasium at Melwood was for? Sorry? Do you know what the gymnasium at Melwood, when we used to train at Melwood, do you know what that was used for, the gym? What? For the coaches to get their hair cut. A, a guy called Ruben Bennett used to be one of the coaches. He'd get his hair cut. John Benson would get his hair cut. We, could, we weren't allowed in the gym. They'd say, get out and play on, on the fields. <laughs> Honestly. Now things are so different, right, Mark? Oh. Now everything... Yeah, well, well I, went to Man, yeah, I went to Man City at 18. And I've, I'm looking at the likes of um, Ian Brightwell, um, David White... Paul, uh, Andy Inchcliffe, Paul Lake, they're all ripped. And I was coming there, I was a little chubby belly, and I, because I didn't do any sit ups, I never did any any weights or anything. It was frowned upon. And yet you go to Man City, who was a league below, I think it was, or maybe two, and all the lads are in the gym then, you know, really. And they all did successfully well, you know, in terms of their careers. Stevie Redmond as well. But yeah. Um, it's amazing how the game's changed and you're seeing the betterment for it because these guys now, they're all athletes, aren't they? They're like yeah. Adonis, aren't they? You know, it's 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 scary the way you see them. You know, each and every footballer looks like a Greek god now. Like, especially... Yeah. I mean, they take their jersey off after the game and it's like seeing me after the show, Mark, like in the, in the dressing room. Like, right. <laughs> <laughs> but you know when we, we... Obviously, I've coached in the Premier League and so when the teams are in the tunnels and you walk past them, and I'm six foot one, and I'm walking past and going, oh, you know, I'm looking up at these guys. It's just, just huge, absolutely huge. Yeah. Wow. I, I do miss it, man. I do miss it terribly. I, I miss the, the, the footballer, the, being a footballer. And I also miss the coaching side of it where you've got that camaraderie, you've got the games at the weekend. You're standing in front of 30, 40, 50, 60, 70,000 people. It's, you know, I miss I miss that. But um, I'm just happy to be working with Arpit and Terry, you know. It's, uh... <laughs> <laughs> uh, so let me answer this question. <laughs> Since you've said you're happy working with Arpit. Mark, if you played today, what would be your value? Okay, <laughs> let, me, let okay. me answer that. I'll tell you exactly what I do. You know what I was, Manas. I I was I was a real steady pro, right? I so wasn't. What would your transfer fee be right now? Well, uh, probably ten million or five million. I was. I I got transferred for hundred and twenty-five grand back in the day, which was that's a lot years back ago. in the day. No, it was. It wasn't that much. And that was the time when like the million pounds were coming in then. Um, but I was, I was too good to let go, and not good enough to get the big move, if you like, you know. And and I'll qualify that with technically, I was okay with the rest of them. I I could pass it. I could do all of that. But mentally, I don't think I would have been able to sustain what you had to do for the likes of a Liverpool. Because every time someone plays Liverpool, it's a cup final. So you have to be on a level mentally, you know, to 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 play against these teams. And because these players who are playing against you are going to raise their game by 10, 20 percent every, every game. And so for that, um, I don't think I would have made the top, top level. But I was a I was a good pro. I would buy me if that's you know what I mean, because I know <laughs> I, I know what I you're it. gonna get. I love it. Yeah. I, I, I would know what I was going to get out of me. You know, it would be a seven out of ten, maybe an eight or a nine, but it was never a five or a four. It was one of them where, and you, you have to have them steady eddies. The likes of, you know, um, they shump. You know, people said he was the water carrier. You know what I mean? But he was the, he was the, 
the fulcrum for that team, wasn't he? And no one ever said, they all say about, you know, Zidane and all of these players. He's the one. I'm not saying that. I was the one. Are you the scouts, Deshaun? I'm the Dow Seishon. Yeah, so yeah, I, I wasn't I I I wasn't um a superstar. I was an average uh good pro, you know. Um and I never took myself serious in any way in terms of thinking I was any better. I, I have a firm belief in in any in any walk of life that you have to know where you are in the pecking order. And by that it means you have to accept yourself where you think you are you can think you're going to be i could think i was an alan hansen but i wasn't an alan hansen and sooner i realized i wasn't an alan hansen and be comfortable where i was and at what level i could play at you know i had lots of promotions with teams we had lots of good cup runs we got into the premier league with bolton there's lots of things that have happened in my career um that i'm i'm very proud of but i wasn't a top top player i might have been now for what for thinking what i i know now i I'll probably if I look at some of the players now and i think you know is is nat phillips any and i played with jimmy phillips as his dad uh is nat phillips any better than me probably not is i don't know canate any better than me probably not but he, he is but you know what i'm saying i i was would i have got in liverpool's team this day and age probably not no but uh, I would have had a, a, a decent career, you know, in the Saudi Pro League. You, see, you, uh, <laughs> you would have gone to Saudi, right? And paid for the Park, Mark. Correct, absolutely, yeah. On a 10-year a contract. Ding <laughs> oh, oh. dong. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Scouts are found in Riyadh running ball <laughs> <at naked. laughs> Yeah. But a Ukrainian looking, running up behind him. <laughs> Oh my goodness, man! We had some fun with that, didn't we? <laughs> For the entire Euros, oh my god, yeah. that was hilarious. Mark, before I let you go, some okay. rapid fire questions, which which have yeah. popped up in my head. Okay. Uh, you just got to say yes and no, and your answer. Like you can give me ten seconds explanation why you've given. Okay. It. Okay. Goalkeepers playing out from the back, yes or no? No. No, that's it. Okay, cool. Uh, VAR, yes or no? Yes, if it's implemented in the right way. Okay. Uh, the best formation in football? If you have the players, 4-4-2 four, four, every time. For me. How many substitutes should be allowed in a game? You played in a time where there's just one. One, three or five? Five. I think five's, five's adequate. Um Seven, no, nine, sometimes you see these nine. Or oh, sometimes you see a whole 22 of them, don't you, on the bench? But no, five's adequate. I mean, one is was silly, really. Um, but yeah, I think five would be absolutely fine. Because one of them's going to be a goalkeeper anyway. Uh, yeah. And so you've got four outfield players. No, how many and substitutes it, should be allowed in a game? I'm not oh, saying allowed. sitting on the bench. No, I just think five should be on the bench and only three allowed or two allowed, okay. whatever. Because okay. it narrows the it narrows the the gap, you know, for the like a Man City to put out Foden, um, whoever else, whoever, and have five or six or seven of these superstars. When they narrow it down, then the the choice is less, isn't it? So it narrows the gap a little bit. Fair. Uh, replays in the FA Cup, yes or no? No, not at all. Just, just get it out of the way. I, I know why they do it. They do it because it's a financial um, for, for the lower clubs. It's if they get Manchester United at Old Trafford, they get half of the fee. I get that, but I think it's time now to just do it all in one go for all all games, League Cup games. I think they do that anyway. But uh, FA Cup games definitely. The best footballer of all time, the goat. Who is it according to you? Diego Maradona. Uh, and two last questions. Who's going to win the Premier League? Liverpool. Who's going to win the Champions League? Oh, interesting. Um, Man City. 
They've got a they've they've got an easy tie in in, in their. And Norwich to win the FA Cup, right? All of the three teams. <laughs> <laughs> Bolton to win League One. Um... <laughs> Oh, God. Mark, it was a pleasure. It was a laugh, right? Thank you so much for your time. You're more than welcome, mate. Any time for you, you know that. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in. Uh, even now, a lot of people are watching. Please, stream ko like career. If you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe, kya, subscribe career to Menace in the Monk. And we promise in 2025, Mark will be back and he will be speaking in Hindi. That's a promise. <laughs> ha! Ha! <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. See you. Take care. Bye-bye.